Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to Claiborne. I'm very happy that you're here. Have a seat at the patio table and let's talk about making some medicine. So on my channel, you're going to notice that I don't really go through a lot of, of clear-cut detailed how-tos. I will show like an example of how I do it and then you can put your own spin on it. But what I want to do is I want to encourage you to try things and to get curious. That's my main thing is I want to encourage you to get curious. And so today I'm going to talk about medicated powder. <laughs> I've had this little container around for three years now and I haven't finished using it. And I thought before I throw it out, I really, really want to make a video about this. So I'm going to try and go through this very quickly. So what I do and what I encourage you very, very much to do is start turning your your containers over and reading your ingredients. Find out what's in there. What makes this powder medicated? What the heck is in here? Okay, so you go down the list. There's only one active ingredient in this. It's been around for years. Other people have been making it for us for years. We just go up to a shelf and grab it off a shelf and we feel very confident about it. But what's really in it? So you turn it over and you read it and there's only one active ingredient and that is menthol. Well, where do they get their menthol? They get their menthol from eucalyptus. Okay, that's why it smells like eucalyptus. It makes sense now. I just thought it was a medicine smell. And then I was smelling it again. I was like, that's eucalyptus. So there are inactive ingredients in it, something like silica, which helps it, you know, silica is added to stuff to make things more slick and make them um, not glumpy where they all come out, of, you know, where the whole thing comes out of the container all at once. It makes it more slick and it easily slides out. It's a more gentle application. So it's got silica in it. It's also got zinc oxide in it um, and cornstarch, uh, corn, corn starch. I was like, cornstarch and menthol, what? <laughs> Why can't I make this? So now I do, I make it myself. So what do I put in mine? Mine is cornstarch with mint. Now I want you to also get curious about your mints and learn about why does mint work? Why would mint, menthol I should say, why does that work on your skin? It's not a histamine blocker. It doesn't block itching receptors in your skin. Instead, it, it triggers cooling receptors in your skin. So when you put on mint, it t tells the receptors in your nerves of your skin to react in a certain way. And those are your cooling, res it triggers your cooling receptors. That's how menthol works. Okay, that makes sense. So it cools down your skin. So what can we make our medicated powder out of? Well, pretty much anything that you have available to you. Now, personally, I choose mint and I choose something called Black Medic. I'll take you up in just a second and introduce you to Black Medic if you don't know what it is. I know you've seen it on the side of the road if you're anywhere near the middle of the country. Not sure where all in the country it grows, but they call it Black Medic. And it's a kind of, it's kind of like clover and it's kind of like uh, alfalfa or something along those lines where it is a fixer of soil. So whenever you have really super, super bad, poor soil, Mother Earth has a way of healing herself and she sends something up to add, to take from the air and put nutrients back down into the soil. So that is one thing that Black Medic does. Now, Native Americans um, had the information and the wisdom to use Black Medic. They used whatever they had and they knew about their their uh, native plants. And we're only a few generations away from that. You know, the pioneers certainly didn't have a drugstore in every corner. They had to know what grew in their area and what to use and how to use it. They had to, they had to rely on themselves. We're not that far away from that. So we can still do that if we choose to do that. Or we can just keep on letting somebody else sell us cornstarch and menthol and give it a brand name. And then we think, oh, this is what we need when really it's cornstarch and menthol. Okay, so Black Medic. Black Medic was used by Native Americans as a laxative, so it gets things flowing, uh, and in that way they used it internally. I believe they crushed the seeds, I'm sorry, something's tickling me, as a kind of cooking flour, so they used it that way. Uh, it kept them healthy, it kept things working the way that it should. Now, I don't know anything about using Black Medic internally, so please do that research for yourself, I beg of you. Always, always get curious and always do your research and find these things out for yourself. You'll be a lot more satisfied than just listening to me. And um, the other thing that it has in it is antibacterial um, components. And so it also is a blood clotter. So if you 
um, are on blood thinners, I do know that you should not, you should avoid black medic because it thins, no, it coagulates the blood. So if you're on a blood thinner, you don't want your blood to coagulate. So just be aware of stuff like that. But it coagulates the blood, so it sends platelets to the wound. And the menthol, the menthol triggers the cooling sensation in your skin. And the cornstarch is absorbent. So it's going to absorb anything that it comes in, comes in contact with. So it will absorb the ickiness and the pus and the bacterium and other things that are in that wound. It's going to absorb and pull it away. Personally, I use it for poison ivy. I get into poison ivy all the time. Got a nice little patch of it on my arm right here. So I was going to toss this out the other day and I said, no, I'm going to stop making a video about this. So this is how I do mine. Now you do yours however you want to. I have tried putting it in a mason jar with fresh plant matter and I've tried shaking it every few days. And I ended up holding too much moisture and I wasn't real sure about my powders after that. So this is the way that I do it now. So I'm gonna share this. Now this may seem like too much trouble, but really once you start doing stuff like this, you're thinking this is just a part of the season where I make my medicated powders and you'll start getting curious and you'll start making your own and you'll find your own ways of doing it. This is how I do mine. So what I do is I take the cornstarch and I go uh, harvest my black medic and then I also um, harvest my mint and then I just mix them up together and I spread them out on a plate and then I cover it with cheesecloth and rubber bands and I just set it aside. I keep an eye on it. I check on it every couple of days. I just kind of put my fingers in there, and push stuff around. I make sure nothing's getting mushy. I make sure that the cornstarch is absorbing things, all the chemical compounds from the plant matter and that the plant matter is properly drying out. Now what I'm afraid of is he loves his muffler. Um, what I'm afraid of is um, that if I put it in too tight of a container that I would end up getting some mold or mildew or something like that. And you don't want that in your medicines. So this is getting really long. So I'm just gonna try to quickly, quickly finish this up. I leave it set on the plate until I no longer see that the mint and that the black medic is, you know, you can tell it's just all shriveled up. It's all gone. It's all dehydrated. And you know that all those chemical compounds are now in this cornstarch. And then you just sift it up uh, into another dish and you can store it into anything you want. I just happen to keep mine in a jar. Um, and then I have two lids. I have the shaker lid. I have a, the container lid, which stores it. And then when I want to actually use it, I just put a little lid on the top with little holes in it and shake it. And I also, in my jar, while I'm storing it, I do add a silica gel just to double check and make sure that I don't get any excess moisture. Very quickly, let's just go up now, one thing I will say is that this is sort of a spiritual um, connection to Mother Gaia for me. So I don't just randomly go up and just start harvesting anything from Mother Gaia. I actually take time to make that connection and feel that connection. You don't have to do all that. You can do it however you want to. It's just a connection for me. So let's go up and I'll show you where Black Medic grows and I'll show you how I kind of make that connection. And then you guys make the adjustments the way that you need to. And I'll end the video with me at the Black Medic. So many, many blessings. Of course, some disclaimers. Always make sure that you have permission. Permission to harvest uh, wherever you're going to harvest. Make sure that you don't take too much um, at a time. You have to leave some there for the wildlife. You don't want to take more than you're absolutely going to use. Make sure you positively identify your plant. I so want you to get a really good look at Black Medic in case you've never really got down and looked at it before. Pretty cool little plant. This is about as tall as this one will get though. Um, and then whatever you harvest from, make sure that it's uh, your shears are sanitary, your basket, your container, whatever. Make sure that it's been cleaned and sanitary. Now, uh, and I also make sure I wash my hands. Um, personally, I always make that connection first. Uh, you know, and you can leave, you can just say a prayer, you can just say a few words, you can just sit in quiet contemplation and just make that connection. However you do it is, is up to you, or you can just do it with no spiritual connection. I just always ask for the advice um, and the blessing from my ancestors uh, whenever I do this. And then I always wish them well, too, because it's not all about me. It is about them as well. And then I harvest my plant, just whatever I'm going to use. And then personally, I leave an offering. And it can be anything that I have an abundance of right now. However, I always leave something that's not going to 
upset the ecosystem. So that was just a clover and some peppercorns. And that's it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm out of breath. Huh? I never heard a deer scream before and I startled the deer and the deer startled me and we both screamed and ran different directions. Then we realized, oh, it's just her. <laughs> it's just her. All right, you guys, <laughs> much love and light. Blessed be.